All right, happy Sunday, folks. Another Sunday short for you guys. Don't mind me out here in the driveway. I was just inspired to make a quick video for you guys here, doing a couple Sunday chores around the house. And I figured, what the heck, let's throw the tripod out here in the driveway. We'll go old school with it. Appreciate everyone for tuning in. Now, I wanted to make this video. I titled it, This is Bigger Than XRP. And I'm talking about this battle that we're up against here with a bureaucracy beast at the SEC and other three-letter agencies. But it's a broader battle to actually bring law and order and justice, accountability here in the United States. And we have politicians within our government, as it was exposed last week with Senator Menendez, getting paid in big gold bars uh, for corruption, right? And this is just one of many deals that we know is going on. And the battle that we have here in this SEC versus Ripple lawsuit is another just one off battle in a bigger, broader war that we have here in the United States. And so I wanted to speak in just a little few words of encouragement for the XRP community. I hope everyone goes to New York and turns up with Ripple at the proper party. It's time to celebrate. We have a historical ruling from Judge Torres that XRP in and of itself is not a security. That's fantastic. Great. Let's go celebrate that. But we still see that the SEC is trying to appeal with interlocutory appeal on the programmatic sales and sales by individuals. They're not letting up. And the reason why we, we believe the reason why that they sued Ripple and XRP first is because they, it was the biggest threat to the incumbents. They had to go after Ripple and XRP, JP Morgan, Citi, all these other competitors that make billions and billions of dollars. They knew right away when they saw this thing come up and they started to see that Ripple was calling it a world reserve currency, right? And they started to develop partnerships, hundreds of banks and institutions coming aboard with RippleNet and then flipping the switch with XRP, they had to shut this thing down. And so they came after Ripple, Brad and Chris, but then they came after you and me as well, right? We won that battle, right? Judge Torres, XRP in and of itself not being a security. Okay, got it. Now we got to continue the fight and I believe that we will see 100% going to see a settlement in the SEC versus Ripple case. That's great. But after that, the battle will not be over. After XRP pumps to five, duh, five bucks, to, to 589, probably not yet. But after it goes to five, 10 bucks, maybe we go up to 20 bucks, we're gonna have some fun. The fight won't be over, folks. And the world around us is on fire. And they are still trying to hold back real opportunities from the American people. What am I talking about? Well, take a, take a look at the ripple equity right now as an example, really hot topic, right? Well, if you, you know, the, the rules as written for most folks, you can't get access to Ripple private equity. You can't get access to other companies that are private unless you're an accredited investor. And so what we have right now at the helm is good guy, Gary Gensler. He wants to protect you and keep you out of these opportunities. Even if you have a net worth of a million dollars, which is the accreditation standard right now, you have to have a million dollars net worth or $200,000 a year income, right? If you don't meet those requirements, you can't invest in private equity, right? Well, what we have now, if he gets his way, he's going to take that accreditation standard from not just a million dollars net worth, he wants to take it to $10 million net worth. So even if our XRP moons and uh, we have a little bag, we got some M's in the bank account, unless you have $10 million net worth, you wouldn't be able to invest in private equity opportunities. Why, do, why am I talking about this? Well, not just because that's an exciting opportunity, but because this is the opportunities that the you know, middle class and poor are locked out of while the elite get access to, while the accredited, sophisticated investors, which by the way, let me know if you can find the definition of a sophisticated investor in the SEC's own rules and, and laws. You can't, right? They have standards for accreditation and then you're supposed to be sophisticated and they leave that up to our interpretation. And even if you're trying to do the right thing, the SEC still comes after you, i.e. this whole lawsuit against Ripple, a company that's been transparent, trying to work with the regulators and doing things the right way since the very beginning. We have a bureaucracy beast that is not just the SEC, it's the IRS, it's the FBI, it's the Department of Justice. And now, God bless them and may God protect them. If <laughs> we got to protect this guy at all costs, Stephen Naryoff, the Ethereum whistleblower, he is singing out loud and it is music to my ears every time we get to see Steven drop another tweet, another bombshell dropping on the Twitter platform. And now we have John Deaton representing Steven. I think that that's going to be a fantastic connection. 
And once again, we're just fighting for a level playing field. Do we want to see Ethereum go down? No, 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 not at all. We just want a level playing field, rules of the road, and let us start building. We want life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And they are trying to take away this opportunity from us and from our children. That's why I say that this fight is so much bigger than XRP. We already know XRP in of itself is not a security. This fight is so much bigger than SEC versus Ripple. We already know that case is going to settle up and they're going to try to shut everybody up. They're going to try to shut Steven up. They're going to try to shut John Deaton up. They're going to try to shut me up. They're never going to be able to shut me up. And we're not going to be done after that settlement. We're not going to be done after XRP goes to five bucks. In fact, when we have you know, the capital that we're building out, the resources, the businesses that we're building out, one puts us in a position to live free, which is the best place to be. And I, I highly encourage that for everyone. If you can get to a job uh, you know, where your job or your business gives you true freedom and the capital and the resources to actually go on the offense, that's where we want to get to. And we're going to use all of our resources, all of our capabilities, all of our connections to fight like hell, to not only expose those that held us back, that caused massive amount of damages, but we need to open this up opportunity up. Thank you very much. But I don't think that we need to have accreditation standards to protect us pr from investing how we see fit. Thank you very much. But I am going to stack some gold and silver. You know, thank you very much for all of your suggestions. But your program doesn't work out. Your program is not the one that we're going to be rolling with over here with my family and my businesses and how we invest. And I've been saying here on Twitter, the damages are massive. And we're going to seek relief in every way possible within the confines of the laws. And the laws that are on the books are very strong. And the United States rule of law continues to remain somewhat strong, even though they're poking holes in it, even though they got corrupt judges. We got corrupt politicians. We know that. There's except in the gold bars. I forgot to mention that's another one of the utilities that you can get out of your precious metals is by, you know, paying off your Senator Menendez. Let all truth be revealed. We need to have accountability. We need to bring justice and We just want the government out of our way so that we can pursue life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, which is, is running our own businesses, investing how we see fit. If we end up losing money, then that's on us. And we don't need the government to protect us. You know, we've gotten so twisted so far from what the founders were trying to set up when they founded this country upon a basic set of principles. And now we've perverted that with what they're teaching in the schools, with what the mainstream media is telling us, the constitution, some old document that's irrelevant and old, and we should just shred it up and restart. There's a majority of us out here that need to get vocal. We've been silent. We've been complacent for too long. And if it's not clear by now, if you don't stand up and put up a fight, you're going to be struck down. They're going to take this opportunity from you and your children. And so while we took a whole lot of crap for having our red folder, for continuing to say that the damages are massive, right? For treating our XRP as a reserve currency and saying that we have a disinformation, misinformation campaign ran by other YouTube influencers, ran by the banksters, ran by everybody, right? Ran by the SEC. Good guy Gary Gensler recognized the utility when he was teaching at MIT, right? And we understand that Ripple calls it a reserve currency, but God forbid you or me treat it as a reserve currency, right? I'm a bad guy for calling my XRP a reserve currency. I'm a bad guy for saying that the damages are massive. My, my ex, you know, estimate, uh, estimate of how big the damages are is in the hundreds of billions and maybe even a trillion dollars plus. And so it's not enough that we get the ruling from Judge Torres and XRP's got clarity. It's not enough that the SEC and Ripple are going to settle up. It's not enough that Steven's going to come on some podcasts and we're going to get to hear a story and we're going to get to see a Netflix documentary. No, we need to save our country. I don't really care. You know, getting relief, the damages, that's one, one deal. But once again, just getting them out of our way is, is, should be something that's not even political. It's not even about the XRP community. Get these, this bureaucracy beast off our back. That's why I was inspired to throw the tripod out here in the driveway, grab a fresh cup of coffee and make a video rant about this because I want to reiterate the XRP community, we are winning. 
Great things are coming our way. XRP is not going to be 50 cents forever. But the battle's not over after this ruling from Judge Torres, after the settlement, right? We got to continue applying pressure. We got to continue electing representatives to go in there and demand the accountability and get us justice that we seek. And so keep up the fight, guys. I hope all of you guys are going to New York to turn up with Ripple for the proper party. Let's go celebrate the victories that we've had. Let's get back in there. I wanted to keep you guys inspired, keep you guys in the fight. I haven't even looked at the charts today, right? I'll, I'll probably be, be doing a live show here later today, and I'll go take a look at the charts, and we'll see where we're at. But I'm not trading this thing. This thing's rigged. I can't trust any exchanges. I'm going to drop a whole other segment on, um, you, you know, I'm going to drop a whole other segment here on the opportunity, Ripple Equity versus XRP. I've been getting a lot of people asking me that question. I'm going to be dropping another video that's going to be an exclusive for the Patreon community where I'm going to break down the opportunity, Ripple Equity versus XRP. And I'll give you a little sneak peek. It's both, right? If you can get access to both, I would love to get both. And I'm just speaking on my behalf. I'm not going to give anybody financial advice and tell you whether to buy the stock or when to sell it. I'm just going to tell you, hey, I'm interested in it. I'm stacking a bunch of it. I'm going to be trying to get some more. And it's a damn shame that they're looking to raise the accreditation standards from $1 million net worth to $10 million. It's a damn shame. And they are corrupt as hell. We've, we are ready to expose them all on it, right? And it's Republicans, it's Democrats. It's both sides of the aisle. This is why I say this isn't a political issue. We should all be getting behind this. And so from one American ranting in his driveway to you guys across, not just this country, actually across the planet that are in the same fight, God bless you. Let's keep it up. Great things are coming, but the enemy is willing to play dirty. So stay on your toes, stay ready, and let's keep up the fight. God bless all of you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.